Lots of stuff in the news about the disability access service. We're going to get into that tonight. Also, the people in Paris decided just to change the name of a park. Do you guys like it? We're going to talk about that too and more tonight on Park Center. Welcome to Park Center for April 14th, 2024. I'm your host, Rob Whiteside. Thank you guys, as always, for being with us. We appreciate you. If you have not already, please subscribe to WDWNTTV for more great content. And, of course, give us a thumbs up as it helps people to find us. And tonight, speaking of fine, this is the finest group of people that we could put together, starting with Stephanie. That we could put together. Short notice. Who knows? <laughs> wow. Wow. I just can't. Got to watch your words on here. Uh, Patrick Hackett. We asked some of the best Disney parks as experts to come. They all said no. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Shannon is frozen. Is fr <laughs> <laughs> Shannon is frozen. No, 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 no. You guys, if you guys want to talk about her, talk about her right now before she comes back. <laughs> and um, she is the best robotic dancer yeah for super chats <laughs> right exactly she does do dances for super chats when she's available hey shannon <laughs> i'm just keeping you on your toes rob <laughs> mission accomplished mission accomplished thank you so much uh again again super chats she loves to dance to the to the music so y'all bring it on tonight um so I, I teased it again in the opening uh there was some stuff back and forth about this uh for those of you who don't know the the das the disability access service is for people who need a little bit of extra help in the parks and so it was originally designed for just that for people who need a little bit of help uh, but there was a lot of controversy about the fact they may revamp with a third party and so that was one of the stories that we ran is that they may be access uh, bringing in a third party uh, and then also uh, that they might be uh, you know cracking down on it because of overuse and that you might actually get banned if you lie about it. Uh, so again, the disability access uh, service has tripled in use in the past few years. Uh, Patrick, what has also coincided in the past few years that might make people want to game the system? What What is really transpired? interesting concept about that, Rob? I wonder why this suddenly became a problem. It's become a problem once before, if you recall, Rob. That was when people were exploiting their children with special needs to get people front of the line access. And uh, Disney is the only one that's allowed to exploit your children. Um, obviously, this is eating into the cost and messing up wait times for people who are using Lightning Lane. I just got back from the parks. I had people in my party who have DAS passes, who have them for legitimate reasons. And do you know what it is? It's the old fast pass system. That's all it is. And if the parks can't handle that, that's on them. Uh, because it's you want to go on a ride, you get 10 minutes off the wait time. That's it. It's nothing different. You book it, you wait the time, and then it's just 10 minutes shorter. That's it. And if there's a wait in the queue, you still have to wait. Uh, so, yeah, it's um, it's interesting. My guess is Genie Plus isn't selling enough, but we've also sold out of Genie Plus a lot. I don't know what the impetus to this is. Well, I have lots of thoughts, but I want to go around the horn and get everybody's opinions. But first, we have to take a quick... Ah, yeah. Uh, this is from Christine. It says, wake up, Shan. Like, that's for you. That is for you. Forty nine ninety nine Super Chat. It says, wake up, Shan. Oh, yeah? Okay. Uh, and then, wait a minute. We have another one, but, you know, we got to... Shoo! Uh, Jungle Cruiser says, Stephanie, where are the premium ice cream bars did you forget? Do you love Mickey ice cream bars? I do. I haven't had one in a long time, though. <laughs> we'll, all, we'll, all, we'll all get them next time around. We'll all have them. But thank you, Jungle Cruiser. Thank you, Christine, for, uh, for, for the super chat. We appreciate it. So um, I, I want to, again, get everybody else's thoughts on this before, we, uh, before, we, before I give some, some thoughts because they, they may uh, coincide. So, Stephanie, uh, what are your thoughts on this system? 
So I think that exactly what Patrick was talking about, the rise in Genie Plus service and everything is, is kind of shifted people's ideas and what they um, want to call, qualify for. Um, unfortunately, I do know that some of these services that say that they can provide VIP tours will also exploit the system and get people in and out of lines with that way too. And that's something that definitely shouldn't be happening. Um, I, do, I do think that this is maybe a good thing with the third party um, system. I read somewhere that they might be going through Advent Health, which is the same company that did all of the COVID testing when they came back online. So the reason for that is a little thing called HIPAA and people being able to um, go through medically trained individuals and those who have um, liability that, you know, you're not just telling anybody at Disney, a cast member, a random cast member, what your medical condition is. So that might be a good thing, but I also know that Universal uses the IAC card, and um, that is also an online system where you can upload a doctor's note or whatever, you know, uh, documentation that you have that kind of tells you about what the problem may be. But from what I can tell, they're really focusing more on the mental aspect of things, and that's hard to know. A lot of people have neurological or pulmonary or cardiac conditions that disallow them to, from standing in line for a long time, and um, you can't really tell that just by looking at them. So I'm, I'm glad that they're talking about autism and that kind of thing because that's definitely needed, but um, they should open it up to other medical conditions and, and those who are disabled too. Yeah, they do say autism and uh, developmental issues. And those are the things, like you said, that you look at a person, you can't tell that there is something wrong. And if you were standing in a line and they bypassed you, first of all, you can't tell the difference between a lightning lane and somebody with, with a DAS, which is, that's a good thing. Um, but also, uh, you know, they're, they're saying that they're going to have to retarget this a little bit. So again, I have... I have some thoughts, but one of the things I wanted to comment on what you just said was about the people doing tour groups. Apparently, people who are nannies who had DAS would use that as a, as a thing to entice people wow. to choose them as a nanny because they have wow. DAS and they can fast past your kids. Yeah, Super how about wrong. that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Shannon, talk to us. Well, first, I'm going to say that was my sister. I didn't have the chat up, so thank you for Christine for making sure I was awake. Um, all right. Something that I think is interesting here is using a third party service. We know that Disney is not always the best when it comes to using their own technology or coming up with their own ideas when it comes to queuing, fast pass, things like that. So I think it is actually a smart move on Disney to um, utilize a, a program or a third party that has experience, that knows what they're doing and kind of takes some of the blame off of them, maybe. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the problem that I've seen in the past is that people who actually might need this might feel self-conscious about asking for it. Um, I know someone who had anxiety who wanted to ask for it but was anxious about the process. Mm. So, I mean, it's just – that's just not a – that's just not a fair I, thing. But I think – I had a – I had a family member who would always just sit and watch the bags or watch the purses or watch the kid in a stroller and wouldn't come on attractions and missed out on trips and family memories and being in those really fun on ride pictures because they were afraid that they might have to use the bathroom in the queue and might not be able to get out in time. That's a serious concern. I don't know why people are, are taking that lightly. Uh, we're just too mean as a society and, and it's, horrible it comes out when you see articles like this but patrick you would agree that people abuse this system yes no or no I don't think you don't people, people abuse the system i think disney needs to better perfect their system they're a giant multi-billion dollar corporation the onus is on them to fix things not on us and okay. if their system wasn't so broken then there wouldn't be the quote unquote abuse of the DAS system. The The fact of the matter is this all comes from the fact that lightning lane genie plus and all that is broken and it has really changed the way you tour the parks. Yeah, I, I would not disagree with that, but I do think people do abuse the system. I don't think that we've tripled the number of, sorry. Uh, I don't think we've tripled the number of people who need this all of a sudden. I think it's because people are like, you know what? If I have one, I don't have to stand in line. Now I, I, I don't, I think anybody who needs one should get one for sure, um, and so it's nice to th think that they may be able to to you know kind of make sure they know who's who. But I think this makes it bad for the people who actually need it that it's going to be harder for them to get that. 
I mean, that to me is, is heartbreaking that the people who need it, it's going to be harder for them to get it. So, um, and also like the thing about banning them from the parks, apparently like that's a thing that's already been there. Uh, in the DAS system if, is if you lie about this, you could be banned from the parks. But how are you going to prove that? Like, when is that going to come up? It seems like just lip service. The same thing with the family, like immediate family only. I mean, how <laughs> I was talking to Jake earlier. He was like, uh, what are you going to do? Like take a DNA test for everybody who's standing in line to see if they're actually family? Like, just because I have a different last name doesn't mean I'm not family. So, you know, how are they going to – how is that going to work out? Um, Stephanie, anything I, I else before we move on? I think the only thing you can do is, is like I said, utilize this IAC system that Universal and Six Flags all across the country use already, because it's kind of a similar process to what Disney does already, where you ask for this and then they, they conference you in with somebody, a cast member currently. But if they did the IAC card, you know, I'm redundant in saying card, that's what C stands for, but they would be going through this this body, these people that already do this, and like I said, might have some more uh, privacy protections involved with that anyway. And then you can specify who you're bringing back with you because you're going to know who's on your on your trip with you, and you can give right. their names already. Yeah, no, I agree. Patrick, when you were there, uh, did you see long lines for Lightning Lane and Genie Plus or the no. Lightning Lane? No. See that I, I've run the into that only, so much recently, though. The, 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 the only line thing for Lightning I've, Lane. I've heard is tron that's the only thing i've heard gotcha um okay well again i hope this works out we still have a lot more to learn about the new system it goes into effect may 20th for walt disney world june 18th for disneyland um and there the, some of the bigger factors of this again just to summarize is how many people you can bring with you if you have uh, a disability access service or also uh how often you have to renew it. It's, it's actually been extended to the life of your ticket or if you're an annual pass holder from 60 days to 120 days, I believe. Um, but uh, And then also, uh, I don't think at Disney World you'll be able to go to guest services and do it. You have to do it before your trip. Um, so, you know, we'll see how this works out. Again, I hope that it that it that does not make things more difficult for the people who need the system. The return to line thing will be interesting too because a lot of the physical people who have physical ailments – um, are, are maybe going to be guided into this return to line, oh, return oh, to queue situation. A lot of times people with physical ailments, they won't grant you a desk. They'll say, well, you can get a wheelchair and you can sit in the wheelchair. I, I know people who have things that they need to sit down for and they're not somebody who the stigma of being in a wheelchair affects their ability to tour the parks. One of the keys that Disney added recently was inclusivity. And they need to stand by that. That That's what they need to do. Gotcha. All right. So let's move on to uh, – <laughs> so when this came up this week, uh, I was oh, very interested. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, they're changing the name of Walt Disney Studios Park at Disneyland Paris. So I've, I'm actually okay with that. I've never been to this park, but I always thought that was Walt Disney Studios Park was always a little bit harder to to figure out. Uh, but the name is going to be Disney yeah. Adventure World. Disney Adventure World. Patrick, you are already laughing. Do you not approve of Disney Adventure World? It is the worst name they can come up with. Disney Adventure World. Duh. Why are they so bad at acronyms lately? And and why why are you just so creatively bankrupt? Disney Adventure World. Come on. And then and then they named a place Adventure Bay, which is where the freaking Paw Patrol are from. Come on, Disney. Just because it's on another network doesn't mean you don't know about it. That's great. People are going to roll up there expecting to see rubble or low rubble. I don't know what the French word for rubble. Somebody, I, I saw, I saw on Twitter somebody actually said uh, that if you like look up synonyms for like uh, adventure and world, that Epic would come up as one and Universe would come up as the other. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Stephanie, uh, are you have you packed your bags for Disney Adventure World? <laughs> I mean, I wish I could go to Paris, but I will say this is what you get whenever you're just looking at IP. You're not thinking about an overall story or, or concept to a park. You're just thinking, oh, how are we going to shove a bunch of IP in here and try, try to make it work? And we're going to take Adventure from California. We're going to take World from Disney World in Florida. and We're going to shove them together. Uh, okay, Shannon? 
It's not far off. <laughs> I'm more bothered by the world piece than I am the adventure piece, which like adventure, they're all sitting in a room, they're saying, what word haven't we used lately? Tiana's Adventure by you. <laughs> adventure. But world, to me, Walt Disney World is sacred. It's a world because, you know, blessing of size, right? That Walt said, like, this is the place where they have all the land that they could possibly want. That's not the case, I don't think, in Disneyland Paris. So I find world to be a really odd choice. And yeah, I mean, same as everyone else, completely lacks creativity or a theme. And I think it's just a cover up for right now. A cover up. Okay. So you think that this is just like a like like a red herring, they're really gonna come back and they're gonna say, Oh no, psych, y'all believe that? You you thought that's what we we're gonna call it? That's what we we're gonna it's call like it. It's like Hyperion Wharf yeah. all over again. So for those of you who are not aware, uh, back in the day, there was a, a, a survey that went out about Disney Hollywood Studios and what would you like to change the name to? And Hyperion, uh, Disney's Hyperion Park, uh, Disney XL Park. There were some strange pulls from that one. And they ended up just sticking with Hollywood Studios. But, um, but Patrick, you've, you've yeah. got Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios doesn't make any more sense than the Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris. So do you Quite think they're coming for less. that one? And then the same thing with Disney I... California Adventure. It's becoming less and less California by the minute. Right. So so you know all your best thoughts come in the shower, right? So I was in the shower thinking about the show. <laughs> and I was like, well, DCA is a fun acronym. How about Disney's Cinematic Adventure? <laughs> Boom. Hollywood Studios, Disney's cinematic studios yeah i got nothing uh i don't know it's there's nothing hollywood about it except for the first like 30 feet <laughs> to the dead center and 50 feet to the right that's it that's all the hollywood you get yeah i mean again i we i'm not trying to take him down for this it just was disappointing it really yeah. was like i i mean they, there was a big announcement we're gonna talk about the rest of the stuff here now but but like this you know, here it is, the new name. I, I don't know what they could have said that I would have liked, though. Uh, but, you know, you're going to – but World Celebration I'm still getting used to, and now we've got to do Disney Adventure World. I, it's, there's too many worlds going on. I, too uh, many. I had to ask a cast member what world I was in while I was in Imagination. I'm like, I, I, what? where – she's like, you're in World Nature. I'm like, the hell I am. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> this is – it's clearly what World Nature. <laughs> Nature is my I was so angry at that moment. It's like, what? <laughs> I'm trying to give you a compliment. Don't make me mad. All right. Well, yeah. I, I mean, dude, I don't know how you didn't get that it was clearly world nature. I mean, obviously. The, it just screams it. Um <laughs> So in addition to this new the the new name there is also going to be they they made just a ton of announcements which is crazy to me because I feel like it used to be we save all these announcements up and we let them happen at D23 na 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 hopefully this means that D23 Expo uh, when it happens is going to be so huge that they need to get all this other news out of their system now I don't know. So they ran through and they talked about some things like this new, uh, the new Tangled ride that's going to be there that's a spinner, which looks like uh, Rapunzel's Royal Carousel to me. We can talk about that in a second. Uh, the BMX show that we knew oh, was gosh. coming. Yeah. All right. Shannon's going to have <laughs> thoughts on that one. Um, there's, they've come up with the, the name of Frozen Land, which is still World of Frozen. Which I'm like... Um, yeah, Arendelle. Uh, and then uh, to go with all the worlds, they're uh, they're redoing the opening to be World Premier Land. Uh, so much stuff to talk about. Uh, Stephanie, why don't you go first, and so Patrick and Shannon can collect themselves. Okay, I love Rapunzel. I love Tangled. I think it's one of the better movies that they've ever done. And I feel so sad that they're just giving her a little spinner ride. I think that's how people felt about Baymax. But, you know, Fantasy Springs over in Tokyo, Disney, I feel like they do a better job. And they're going to have, I don't know what their their ride is, but it's supposed to be a boat ride as well. So maybe it's going to be something that we can eventually ask for them to come to, <laughs> for it to come to Disney World. <laughs> I wouldn't want the spinner though. No, you want the dark ride. Like we, they're making the dark ride for Tokyo. Why? Yes. Why? I don't. Um. Mm, okay, Shannon. OLC thoughts? doesn't want to share. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. 
I am still trying to wrap my head around a BMX show that's involving <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. Where is this coming? Are we? It's giving Tarzan rocks, except I think that made a little more sense, right? Like it was like a rollerblading show. The BMX, yeah. That there's something about the costume that doesn't say Disney to me. Is this on the edge of risque? I, I don't know. It's just it's very weird, but maybe that fits the European audience better, and I am just. Stupid American. I don't know. Moulin uh, Rouge, Alice. I mean, sp- yeah. speaking of yeah, speaking <laughs> of nightmare fuel. I mean, look at this fella right here, right? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Patrick, talk to me. I don't know, man. I got, I got <laughs> very little <laughs> anymore. Um, <laughs> Disneyland Paris is a fantastic park. Dis- Walt Disney Studios was fine. I mean, they're making it something way more than it was when I was there six years ago. Uh, But these names are terrible. I don't know who is the head of Imagineering for Disneyland Paris. Uh, I actually am really interested in the Tangle Boat Ride, or Spinner, Boat Spinner, whatever it is. It's better than a toilet. Rapunzel deserves (laughs) more than that. Yeah. Speaking of names, Avengers Campus in Disney Adventure World Park. Right? I mean, come on. But again, it's it's nice that there's going to be a nighttime show there. That's cool. And they also are have announced that they are going to uh, extend the drone show, uh, which, it, I mean, it looks amazing, the uh, electrical sky parade. So, again, a lot of big things coming. Um, I'm not learning I'm not learning French on Duolingo for nothing. I mean, I want to go someday. <laughs> so let's make this happen. Don't bother. Right? <laughs> I, got, I got that. The- what? <laughs> The yeah, French is going to be enough. Oh, is it a French uh, shirt? Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh. Oui, c'est vrai. <laughs> Your French uh, will never be good enough. Just don't bother. It's fine. We're, we're all going to be fine. Uh, let's talk about this because this I find interesting. So they announced this week... Uh, we're going to talk about Tiana a little bit. Hold on. Um, they announced this week two new stores announced for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I take offense to new, by the way, here, because <laughs> in the same way I take offense to the Fantasyland expansion at Magic Kingdom, there were attractions there. Uh, there was a Winnie the Pooh playground at one point. There was a thing called 20,000 Leagues at one point. And so when you take something and you demolish it and you put something new on it and you call it an expansion, I call shenanigans. Uh, so two new stores announced. These are stores that already existed. This is Splashdown Photos and, uh, and the Briar Patch. Uh, at, but we knew they were, they, they were making announcements already about these, the stores in Critter Country being re, renamed and reopened for the Tiana Bayou Adventure. But now we know that we're going to have uh, this, the T- Tiana's Bayou General is going to be one of them. And then they've actually finally come back to this one, and they're going to call it the Critter Co-op, which to me makes little to no sense. Um, so uh, I don't know. Stephanie, can can you make sense of that? I'm happy that it's opening. I mean, it's been shuttered ever since uh, COVID, so that's good though, right? Yes, it's actually a really cute shop because it's underneath all of that ride attraction and just the internal uh, the decor was great until they purchased went online and purchased some sort of uh just plain pictures of bears and things and hung it up there but anyway um yeah i don't know what the critter co-op why why everything has to be a co-op i was really hoping that maybe they would pull from the tiana's palace um and you know do like a little beignets thing or something back there by the splashdown photos area um, and kind of really rework that area, but no, they're just gonna put a new sign on there and call it something different. Yeah, I, 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 I saw theory. some. Oh, you do, but before, before we go into your theory, we have to do something else first. We have a super chat from Troy McDonald. Uh, don't forget, NHL and NBA playoffs starts real soon, so it could impact Disney some in the Disney restaurants uh, that have TVs. That's a good call. Um, uh, March Madness, uh, we had NC State in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, was in the Final Four. The night of the Final Four, there's a sports bar nearby that I was uh, an ale house, and I was like, ah. Oh, We'll just go to the Ale House. And we got there, and not only was there going to be no way to get into the parking lot, they were showing outdoors 
in a like Disney style with the inflatable screen the game, which they lost. But I mean, still, I was like, I I didn't think ahead. I didn't think (laughs) I didn't think ahead. So, again, uh, Troy, that's a great, great call out. So thank you for the super chat. And of course, Shannon, thanks for the dance. And here, talk about uh, talk about this for a little bit. Yeah, so I my theory is that someone at Disney watches Park Center because last week I said, when is something going to happen with the Briar Patch specifically? Because it's such a beautifully themed store, both inside and out, and it's a waste that it's just been sitting there closed. So I think they heard me say that. I threw it out into the YouTube-verse, Epic Universe, and they were like, ooh, critical up. And so yeah. I'll take it if you're going to reopen it. Well, I mean, this does look like it was done in a hurry, so maybe, maybe that's a, a thing. I don't know. I, what I don't understand, though, is the, the critter thing because it's not really buying into the Tiano, Tiana like, general store situation. Uh, and it, and it's also – there's never been Critter Country. It's been Frontierland, so like Critter Country is a thing that existed in Tokyo and in California and not here. So uh, interesting choice. It almost actually looks like the same letters from Critter Country, like they had like the stencil already mm-hmm. done. So, yeah, good job, Disney. Way to, way to pull that together. Um, <laughs> So let's talk about Tiana again, uh, because they've announced everything pretty much except for an opening date. How about that? Just basically, so many announcements have happened, including they hit the you fact with the Olaf Rob in summer. Yeah. Oh man, love that. So there's a there's a headband that uh, this the ambassador here has teased. Uh, although again, we talked about this last week that the Epic Universe stuff is all over the place. Isle of Burke that doesn't open for over a year has a ton of merch, and we're excited that there may be some ears that we can purchase soon. Um, and then also, uh, Patrick, you, you love this. Uh, it looks like Tiana's Bayou Adventure is now canon because a book was written about it. So it's I know you love when things are canon. That's, a, that's an important thing for you. Um, but one other thing I want to talk about before we get into this is that they released some footage or some photos, uh, which I feel like Twitter blew up about, about these musical frogs, the frog musicians. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) everybody was very excited about these and there's also a truck. So Patrick, did you get to see any, you, you just came back and did you get to see any of this in person? (laughs) So I saw the critter go outside before we had the news story. And I'm like, ah, we definitely have that. I walked right by it. I was like, yeah, we definitely got that already. And then I saw it on the network a day later. I was like, I probably should have told somebody. Probably should have mentioned that. (laughs) I I don't know. I really don't know. Um, Splash had such a a huge place in the cultural zeitgeist. And they're obviously very hard trying to push that this is going to be a really good attraction. It's going to have a lot of story to it. I still don't understand why Disney moves away from retelling the story no one really cares what tiana and naveen did after happily ever after that's not kind of what disney is about like let's just keep it on the story and that ride has a great could have a great story and some really scary scenes with dr facilier um so we'll, we'll see what happens i love the critters they're adorable um that chubby frog makes me laugh every time i see it so uh, I think they're doing good work. I think Louie looks great. I'm just, I, I just feel like some of this is a swing and a miss. How dare you? Uh, you guys saw the pictures of Tiana's truck because again, what, what's, more, what's more in line with the Princess and the Frog movie that we all know and love than a delivery truck? Shannon. I, I don't know what to say about it. It just make it make sense. And don't even get me started on the pantsuit. The truck is the least offensive thing that's going on there. You do love the, you, you do oh, love she, the pantsuit, don't you? She looks like somebody who showed up for the park for like adventure days. Mm-hmm. It doesn't world feel day. princess. Adventure world? Adventure world no. is it? No, Not. no. Okay, no. Uh, I like the but darker let's... day adventure days. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm kidding. So the uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure delivery truck installed, and uh, there is—is is this going to be a photo op? Because, or, or, or are they just teasing us in the fact that they're inside it? Like, are you going to be able to get inside it and do a? Photo is there op? food is in it? it? I want food in there. Uh, <laughs> beignets. I, no, it, yeah, beignets. Real beignets. None of this nonsense <laughs> you're trying to put off. 
Ah, uh, <laughs> good times. All right, let's move on to 1900 Park Fair because I know where Patrick... there weren't beignets. Whoa! But there is a pantsuit. There is a pantsuit. <laughs> Man, y'all, wow, y'all are a little amped up tonight, and I'm here for it. By the way, last week uh, we had a comment about Shannon. It was like, Shannon tells it like it is. So, Shannon, hold no punches <laughs> okay. about that freaking pantsuit. Uh, here it is. Here's the pantsuit in all its glory. Uh, you know, I was talking to my wife about this. I was like, yeah, Tiana's going to be there in her new outfit. And she's like, well, what's her new outfit? And I said, uh, it's, uh, it's her adventure outfit, which, again, is the pantsuit. Um, I... I I don't know. Uh, I feel like, and and let's let's start with Stephanie on this, and then go to Shannon on this one because she's she's fired up. She's ready to go, um, and then we'll go to Patrick, who actually went. So this is awesome. Uh, Nineteen hundred Park Fair. The it, do you think kids are going to be disappointed not seeing Tiana in the in her Princess and the Frog dress? Or, I mean, talk to me about that. Hundred percent. I mean, I have four girls, and they want to be princesses. And sure, you have like the working dress for Belle, like her little blue reading dress, and you have, uh, you know, Snow White, and she has her little like brown outfit, you know, that's kind of raggedy. <laughs> but you have you have Briar Rose and hers too. But they don't appear in those dresses. They appear in their princess gowns, and that's what you want to see. And I'm telling you, this is a travesty. This is a travesty that they are at the Grand Floridian, <laughs> and it's not Mary Poppins. It's not the your you know English characters with Alice and the Mad Hatter and Pooh and Tigger. And at least at least give me that for breakfast. And you could have done the wish thing for dinner. But they took away the Cinderella dinner where they had Lady. Tremaine and the stepsisters and boy are they amazing like if you ever get to interact with them those women I mean I don't know what improv classes they do but they are fantastic so I'm sad for this I'm I'm sure that these other characters are fine and if go and read Jason's uh, review of this because I love the way he writes it he's like well you know they made it into a story that sort of fits together <laughs> all these disparate characters but yeah I, I wish that they had had stuck with the original Mary Poppins breakfast. How are you saying this doesn't make sense at the Grand Floridian? Is that what you're telling <laughs> well, me? Well, okay, wait, no, 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 no. The the story makes sense, and they don't reference any of the characters in the voiceover. Plus, if you saw the pictures, there's a lot of characters, and I hope they plan on rotating people in and out because my daughter can't get enough of Asha. So. It's all people who had a wish or a dream. I mean, not that that's not every single Disney character ever, but it, it, it makes sense in the storyline of it. I, too, will miss the uh, the stepsisters. They were amazing. Yeah. Uh, you want me to... this, this is Patrick right here. Here he is. At the... <laughs> no, but I was stoked to meet Prince Ali. I've never met Prince Ali. Like, that um, was fun. He, he's, he's, he's a phony. That's not a wish. That's a, that's a sham. That's the wish that he made that made him that. Rob, the storyline is fine. Okay. All right. Shannon, go. Okay. So I'm actually going to start with the positive here. I'm not going to completely dunk on this because I do like the interactive element, especially for the price point that you get with some of these breakfasts. I do like that it becomes kind of like a show. However, oh. that being said, why keep the name 1900 Park Fair? What does that have to do with any of this theming? Um, this may be blasphemy, but I think this concept could have fit in the Crystal Palace where you're bordering Adventureland and some of that architecture is flowing into yes. Adventureland. So I just think it was not fully um, thought out in terms of a plan. But... Hmm. Interesting. Here, here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, but let me let me go back before we move on and Patrick and just like just because, again, did you eat you ate dinner there, correct? Dinner. I did not do breakfast. I was able to get talk, dinner. Talk a little bit about the food. So I thought our review was pretty spot on. Um, the one thing I, I did, I had a difference. We didn't have porchetta. We had roast turkey. That was absolutely out of the world. Um, I'm not from the South, so I don't know like authentic gumbo. Uh, our reviewer said that it was weird. I thought it was really tasty. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I thought the curry chicken was good. It was a fun experience. The strawberry soup tasted exactly like it used to. Cast members were fantastic. The characters were great to meet. Um, if you have a sensitive tummy and maybe have a DAS pass for that reason, I would just uh, be cautious because I had a wonderful meal. And then, yeah. Um, but meeting uh, oh, no. Tia was great. 
<laughs> meeting meeting Maribel was wonderful. Um, I love seeing Prince Ali. Like I hopped up to see Prince Ali. Um, yeah, yeah 19, I said nineteen hundred Park Fair. Like supposed to be the the address of a room. I don't know, man. I, it, the, when you guys then talked about it, I yeah, the story doesn't make sense. They kept Big Bertha though. That was important. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, th- this is a restaurant that's been closed since uh, COVID, and it was really nice to see it open back up again and there to be an option. And people are going gangbusters to try to get in there. So I think a lot of people had fond memories of it, and a lot of people probably want to get their kids in front of uh, Mirabelle and, um, and Tiana and maybe even Prince Ali. I don't know. Um, so, again, very, very cool thing. Uh, let's talk about this, because in downtown Disney, there's been construction for anybody who's gone to the West Coast and downtown Disney. There's been destruction, actually, forever. They had an AMC movie theater, tore that down. They uh, they had a, uh, a Rainforest Cafe. They draped some cloth over it and called it a Star Wars uh outpost um they have this huge espn zone that they've just they did selfies inside and now it's it's whatever um so there's been a lot of destruction yeah there's been a lot of destruction a lot of walls and it's nice to see that finally we're getting to a point where there's stuff coming uh there are new restaurants with uh with very fancy names which feels very california uh paseo centrico and uh, I'm not going to try that one. Tien, Tiendetta? I don't, I don't know. Uh, but they're opening in May, and they look fantastic. Uh, a lot of great food. Again, this feels perfectly settled for California. This is like this looks like the kind of place that if you're in California, you would want to go and hang out for the night. So I, I can't wait for this stuff to be there. I know, Shannon, you went to California uh, not so long ago. Have you looked mm-hmm. at this? And I also know that you are a fan of the finer foods. So, I mean, are you excited about this? Yeah, I mean, I always love new food choices. I do always find that downtown Disney to be a little sad, maybe because it is so much smaller than Disney Springs. Um, So I think a refresh is okay. I don't really think, um, you know, it's anything fantastic to write home about. I would like to see them actually expand downtown Disney if they could, but we'll, we'll take something new. Yeah. Uh, real quick, we do have a super chat. Um, oh, I almost unplugged my headset. I got so excited. <laughs> y- you okay? You all right? I don't think I can handle any more tonight. Uh, Jessica's on here and said Splash Mountain uh, should have stayed. People should wear a VR headset on Splash Mountain uh, or uh, of Splash Mountain when the ride opens, which is interesting. I would like that for um, uh, the Simpsons ride and Back to the Future. That's what I would like. Is Spaceship that, Earth. Like, yeah, like <laughs> see the original Spaceship Earth and not yeah. the, the Jib Jab videos. Uh, also, I, I, there is a park, and I may have talked about this on Park Center recently. There's a park in Germany that is doing VR for a roller coaster, and it's Phantom of the Opera. If you had to Hell give yeah. me a, a hundred guesses as to what the VR overlay was on a roller coaster, I would never have gotten to Phantom of the Opera. But, um, you know, again, VR headsets, kind of cool. So, Jessica, thank you for the super chat. We appreciate it. Um, Patrick, uh, you went to California. Did you spend much time in downtown Disney when you were there, or is there nope, anything for Patrick? I did not. I did not. Uh, I also enjoy the finer foods, despite having eaten at three all-you-care-to-enjoy meals on this trip. Um, I think the food looks good. Uh, to me, downtown Disney in California isn't the same draw as disney springs is i think disney springs is um you know hey we need a time out from the parks and i think downtown disney feels much like a lot of disneyland it's more local stuff so i'm I'm happy for people who frequent there to go get some grub and uh, i don't want an expansion of downtown disney i want the disneyland forward project to actually do something hope it would no that's that's a good point that like it would be great if we just stop where it is and then just build attractions for the rest of that. Let's just do that down on that end of the, uh, on the end of the uh, downtown Disney. All right, let's move on to Communicore Hall because again, we have not talked about Communicore Hall enough. Uh, it seems like the building that has taken the longest ever to be built, and it is a shadow of what it was supposed to have been. Um, but one of the things that we had our, our reporters uh, get some photos of is that there's artificial turf installed at Communicore Plaza. We definitely know the opening date of this one. It's June 10th. This is actually a 
still two months away, and it's starting to look closer to being able to be open. Uh, the other thing is that there's an hours of operation screen, which I assume is more along the lines for the uh, the meet and greets that they're going to be there. Or they're moving Mickey and friends into this one. Uh, and then they also had the, uh, the Communicore Hall dancing light testing uh, at Epcot as well. So we're two months until this thing opens. Um, honestly, if all the lights work, this should be the best disco in the entire world between <laughs> all the stuff on Spaceship Earth, all the lights in the ground, all the lights blinking over here off of this building. I mean, it's it's going to be a lot. Um, Patrick, this is in World Celebration. I don't know if you knew that or not. This is World <laughs> Celebration. Do you know how stupid is. I felt? And now you're, you're compounding it. I was like, I really should know this. Um, I'm upset. I didn't see it. I was in Epcot a ton. I was at Boardwalk. I didn't see any testing. Um, man, I got to say, Epcot has just become like a cafeteria. It, you go there to eat oh. and drink, and maybe there's a few attractions along the way, but they have ridiculous wait times. And, uh, yeah, I was really disappointed with my time in Epcot this trip, although the food did not disappoint me. Uh, big, big, great job by Flower and Garden. I, I okay. want Communicore Hall to open, but what's it going to do? A few, you know, meet and greets is not going to solve Epcot's problems. And then they're moving on to other places. We're going to move beyond Big Thunder. We're going to revamp lands in Animal Kingdom. When Epcot still needs some help and to make it a park that you're not afraid to take your children to on a weekend during a festival or after five o'clock, you know, I just don't well, see Communicore Hall moving the needle. Don't forget to tune in to uh, to Disney Plus and Patrick hosting Epcot becoming a food hall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's Epcot becoming a food hall. Um, honestly, you know the thing that throws me off about this is that um, I thought by the pictures of, of all of these things that the way that Communicore Hall was built right next to it was going to be this area for uh, the Communicore Plaza. I thought that was supposed to be like a new amphitheater for like all of the shows that we have that take place in the very back of the park at, uh, at the American Gardens, like for, you know, the, the food and wine and flower and garden and all the stuff that they do for Broadway. I was hoping that they were building some kind of a venue up close and in the middle of the park to be able to have that happen. But, you know, in looking at this, it looks like what they've created is a lawn um, that is similar to what they have at the hub in Magic Kingdom and not like, I guess, I don't know, Stephanie, I must have been like drinking heavily. I don't know what I was doing. There was some problem. Uh, talk about this a little bit before we move on. Yeah, so you don't have the backdrop of the castle, though, to, for everyone to sit through and sit down and eat and, and take a picture. So the problem that I saw, and we were there during spring break, a very busy time, and the whole middle section of World Celebration was open, and we could cut through, which was great to get try to get to the land and get to Guardians and that kind of thing. But nobody, they had so many tables and, and different places, like, for seating set up. Which again, most people complain that the parks don't have enough seating, but nobody was sitting in this area, and it was very sparse um, with shade. I just feel like um, what Patrick has said about you know the the design aesthetic, not great, and I wish that they had kept the Fountain of Nations. They need something that's moving, a water feature there. Well, they put a figment in that planter. I don't know if you saw that or not. <laughs> I did, actually. You did? Okay, yes, yeah. All right. Yes. Then I don't know what you're complaining about. Um, let's move on to the uh, the AP Lounge. So funny thing about this is that last year during the VI pass holder days, you got to be very careful when we say that, um, yeah. they, they, they had a little section of the uh, – and it's nice that they did that. Because, again, Patrick, and you and I have talked about it a lot, that we feel like Magic Key folks in California get a lot. We don't really get a lot as pass holders on the East Coast, except for maybe a magnet that you have to, like, give, like, a blood sample to make sure that you can get it. Um, <laughs> now they've got this this um, this pass holder, VI pass holder days, which will actually be at a time when I'm there and can enjoy it, which is crazy. Uh, but last time they did it, they cordoned off a section of the um, of the food court in the land. 
<laughs> I guess they just put up a velvet rope in front of the chairs there and said, you got you come back here, get some Zarg nuts that we have left over from the New York Comic Con and um, and some M&Ms and a magnet, which, again, is better than nothing. It really is. I, I'm not I don't mean to to put that down, but um, this is actually an interesting thing because we were talking about 1900 Park Fair and it hadn't been. We talked about this a lot since COVID. It seems like. We always say, oh, this is the final piece, and now we're back to where we were before COVID. There's always one more thing, and the restaurant Marrakesh was one of those things. And now it's going to be the the Passholder Lounge, which it's kind of cool to think about being able to go back in here because it's been closed, uh, again, since – COVID, right? Like it it never reopened after that. So there's going to have a pass holder lounge here. And also there's going to be not only, uh, I, I believe there's going to be a regular discount, but also are in the parks, but also they're going to do a DisneyStore.com discount for those of us who can't travel to the parks during the pass holder days. So um, Stephanie, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Are you excited about this? Is this, this is a good thing? I really do like the lounges. You know, I went to the DVC lounge this last time we were there, and it's nice to just take a beat and cool off and get a, a drink and a snack. Um, you, of course, you had to sign in and wait for your, your number to be called or whatever, but hopefully that this one, you know, they have a better control of the flow. And I like that it's in the World Showcase because a lot of times you're out there, you want to sit down with your drink or something. There's no, you eat on a trash can. Come on, people. Like, let's, <laughs> let's good, it's good to have a space to sit down and cool off yeah uh patrick i'm excited i'm really excited uh no not everything has come back from covid how about delivering my shopping to my hotel so i don't have to carry it around with me yeah. worry about breaking yes. it or worried about somebody taking it um more lounges but create new spaces for them or use existing space that you have for people to chill out and more ap and dbc lounges aren't going to hurt you your APs and your DVCs are going to spend more money when they're relaxed and not feeling the constant pressure and the pounding nature that the park takes on you sometimes. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I don't disagree. I think there should be more of that. But do we think that this restaurant will ever open up again? Because there has been a changing of the guard for Morocco, right? They, they, they used to be it was you know, owned by Morocco. And then they sold it or they, they grabbed it back. Uh, and Disney has been basically ever since then some piece of it, whether it's the everybody's favorite chimney or uh, or whatever, <laughs> has been like under wraps since then. It's like, was this place in such disrepair that they had to like basically rebuild it? Like, it seems like it's been forever. And I don't know. You know, I think that my thought was, hey, Disney's taking this back. Make way for Prince Ali. <laughs> um, but, but I don't, I mean, we haven't really seen much ha happen here. So do we think that restaurant's going to open back up, Shannon? They have Spice Road table. I don't think they need to open it back up, frankly. <sighs> and is it problematic that they had belly dancers? Borderline, yeah. <laughs> no, Please the problem is her, not, right? it's not the belly dancers. It's gross people. <laughs> that's, that's the issue is gross people Mo because... Rockin has a belly dancer I think okay all right gotcha uh, all right let's move on to uh phantasmic the this phantasmic when it, it finally reopened at Disney uh Disneyland and then when it did then uh the dragon caught fire and they were like up oh, I guess we have to close this again and they they put together a Dixieland band and and since then there really hasn't been much going on but now we have rumors we've seen we've seen signs that Fantasmic is returning to Disneyland once again um and it looks like it's May 24th uh will be the first time that it's on the calendar we knew it was coming back in May, they did say that. They did say we'll come back different than it was before. So I don't think we're going to see the same dragon that we were always jealous of on the East Coast when we saw it on the West Coast is how cool that was. And, uh, man, it was lit for sure. Um, Stephanie, do you want to talk a little – too soon? Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about Fantasmic? Like, I love the one on the West Coast. I mean, I love ours, but I love that there's, there's a different energy. It really is. It is. I mean, there's something to be said about standing in front of pirates and, and looking into the rivers of America and seeing, you know, 
Peter Pan ship coming through or what have you. So I, I don't know. I, I would hope that they have something very similar to what they had before with Maleficent and the dragon. I will tell you at Disney World, I saw Fantasmic in November and there was a something that went wrong with the dragon. And when that happens, B mode comes out and Maleficent just grows, you know, seven, eight stories or whatever it is. And she fights Mickey as herself instead of turning into the dragon then they project the dragon onto the water spray and that's i mean it's fine it looks cool that she's you know moving upwards and the kids are like wow but you don't get that big reveal of the dragon thereafter and so then i saw it in march and everything went like clockwork it was wonderful it was great there were no missing characters all the floats went along and it looked wonderful and i just really hope that for disneyland i hope that it comes back full force and they have something better than the, what they had before um okay yeah I, I i can't disagree with that uh shannon you want to talk about that before we move on um no perfect uh let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about pixar fest because uh and here's the fun thing here's a fun thing folks is that i asked all of these people do you want to p talk about pixar fest they all said nope <laughs> no we do not and i was like Okay, well, we're still going to talk about it because uh, there there are a lot of different things that were announced about it, and it, it, it's coming soon to Disney California uh, or, or Disneyland. Um, so it opens uh, at, uh, I think, May 10th? No, April 26th is when it opens up. And they showed some of the foods. Uh, I'll give you a shot of the foods here that, uh, that are here because, again, Patrick always gets upset when they have better things out west <laughs> than uh, in the east. Um, but, yeah, this – this stuff looks amazing. Uh, it looks like it's Macaroon. just, yeah, I mean, just awesome, over the top, what they're putting together for uh, for the Pixar Fest. They're really going all in. I'm excited. I feel like I might actually uh, need to try to get out there for this. Um, but something something plastic this way comes. Uh, there are a lot, oh a lot, <laughs> a lot of collectibles for this. Uh, and, and our good friend Neko hit me up in chat and was like, uh, uh oh, Rob, your wallet is crying right now. And I'm like, yeah, you're telling me. Um, so we've got this Doug, uh, popcorn bucket, the slinky dog sipper, which somebody had said in our discord, like, wait a minute, where does the liquid go? That's actually a clear container. Butt. No, it's a clear <laughs> yeah. container. And I was like, don't, don't, don't put red juice in there. That's not good. Um, but all these straw, all these straw clips. And then you've got that pizza planet truck. Uh, and that that guitar for um, mm. uh, for Coco looks amazing. Luckily, uh, I already have the uh, Pixar ball sipper, but I, and also luckily, uh, I do not have a straw clip problem because yeah, yeah, there's so much. There's so I mean, much. I don't know what it's like to have a problem with merch. No. <laughs> um, are are you, are you talking about your munchlings? Are you talking? They're adorable. You talking about? Look what does it smell like in there, Patrick? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, Nothing. they have lost the smell. Oh, no. Very upsetting. Oh. I can't jill the package by trying to smell it. You can stop now. Um, the uh, the wishables. Ah, oh, they still have that new wishable smell. Oh, oh man, that's great. Whew. Mmm, love it. Um, sorry about your sorry about your little food things. That's crazy. He actually texted me. He was like, "Ah, I got a Lotso, and he's a slider." And I'm like, "A what?" Yeah. And so he's a slider. It's a, it's yeah. A burger. Yeah. I guess. Why do I have two Lotsos? That's Why what I was saying. That many <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't get that. All right, but again, Pixar Fest coming out to California. Uh, if you get a chance to go out there, it looks like it's going to be amazing. Between the uh, the the food, there's also uh, a new parade, which as as I feel like we talked about this before with this parade. Like there's there's Joe. You know it's you know it's Joe because he's wearing the the <laughs> the purple suit uh, and the hat. So there you go. Uh, it, and he's not. Doesn't have a piano. He always I can't tell him uh, if he doesn't have his piano that it's that it's Joe from Soul, right? Because there's a different band on there and someone else is playing the keyboards. Why isn't he playing the keyboards? It's <laughs> it's a thing. Anyway, uh, so Pixar Fest. There we go. Let's. Here's the other thing. I I talked about this in uh, in the chat too, and I said, hey guys, we're gonna talk about lug bags. And Patrick goes, lug bags. <sighs> yes, 
Lug Bags. We're going to talk about Lug Bags because Lug was the sponsor of Destination D23 this year. They gave out um, bags to everybody multiple times, and they were also they, were, they they were showcasing their bags at Destination D23, but they weren't selling these bags. They were like, here it is. You can't have it right now, but here it is. And and it they was on. Knew a, like, they were a, dealing with. It was on a hook, <laughs> but it was like locked on, and there was only one of each. Uh, but one of the ones that they had, and just so you guys know what we're talking about here, is here's the Figment one. Uh, and we've labeled this as it's coming back as generic. This was used for the Festival of the Arts, uh, but now it says Epcot on the back of it, so you can still get this one. But uh, there are other lug bags, including this little one that has Chip from uh, from Canada. Look at that one. Um, on honestly, I have a question for uh for stephanie i don't know if you buy lounge fly bags or what i it feels like you know how we have a starbucks like deal and then joffrey's carts are here and there i feel like we're cheating on starbucks when we have joffrey's carts everywhere it, are, are you gonna stay true to lounge fly are you gonna pick up some of these lug bags is this all ridiculous um, no, I think that they're very cute, actually. And I think there's one from Norway. You didn't show that picture, but it's a belt bag or fanny pack, whichever you prefer to call it. And that is really cute. I wish that it said Epcot or something on there. Yes, that one. Um, but what I really appreciate about these is that they have embroidery. And I feel like that works so much better than just a decal, <laughs> like Disney loves, or um, something that's sublimated onto um some you know material and it can just wear off and pick off easily and so especially for kids i mean this kind of thing you know holds up better so yeah i think i might pick up a couple of these these are very cute well and this is the one for run disney they uh they showed this this week that uh for the run disney event that's coming up next weekend they are going to have some more of these lug bags so these seem to be the the new it thing for them obviously they've done harvey bags they do dooney and burks there's room for everyone in the bag <laughs> space apparently um I, i'm not gonna even go to patrick on this one uh shannon do you have thoughts on these bags yeah i i like the lug bags i have a few lounge flies and i have to say they're not the material is not very forgiving it's difficult to even fit a water bottle inside the standard um, lounge fly backpack. So these look a little bigger um, and they have, they look like they have movement to them. Um, so I like that. I like that better. And I really like the designs too. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of these come out. I'll probably get one. Okay. Um, all right. And Patrick, thumbs up, thumbs down, lug bags. What are you thinking? There we go. Perfect. <laughs> way, to, way to keep it in the middle. Um, let's talk about Epic Hotels. So there, there are two hotels uh, that they're going – there's going to be a, a few hotels, but there's going to be two hotels, the Stella Nova and the Terra Luna. They're coming to Epic Universe. Again, this is uh, for a moment. Just bear with us because normally we only talk about Disney stuff. But for just a moment, we're going to be Universal Center here, <laughs> and we're going to talk about uh, – we're going to talk about these because – Again, the the buildings themselves look amazing. They look a lot like uh, the endless summer resorts that are out there, but they look very cool. When I'm going through this, though, and there was a fly-through, which probably cost as much to make the fly-through uh, video as it did to make these resorts, but they're just – there's something about these resorts. They're nice, but I, I said this on Twitter, and I fully believe this, is I would have traded both of these hotels in for – a Dark Universe Hotel, an Isle of Burke Hotel, a Nintendo Hotel. Just, I mean, like half of this, a Nintendo Hotel? Are you kidding me? But everything about this is very, I mean, the first vibes we got from this, that it was going to be very much like the Star Cruiser. This looks like mm -hmm. a Star Cruiser room with an extra bed. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it looks a little bit like that. But, um, Stephanie, I saw you nodding your head. Uh, they're nice hotels. They, they look nice, yeah. but it feels like... You had an opportunity here. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think that they kind of, again, try to shove IP into their already existing hotels, like the Minions and things like that. But this is a Lowe's brand and not a Universal, so maybe that has a difference. And they're a little bit more upscale. And I really, you know, whereas Disney is having an identity crisis when it comes to redoing their hotels and their theming and keeping true to the, you know, original concept for the resort – Universal is hitting it out of the park. I mean, they really are. Um, we stayed at um, 
the uh, Cabana Bay, and you feel like you're walking into the 1950s. Like it's really it's that great. So I do think that you know Universal has a, it up on Disney on this kind of thing, and I hope that Disney kind of yeah, there you go. See, it's you have you have that experience of going into this other world kind of thing, and yeah, I think that that's a great thing. But you see what I'm saying is that fly through, I mean, must have cost them a lot. Like that's not just like a little model. That's I mean, and and you probably need that for that space. Also, there aren't many people that look like me there. Just throwing that out. Um, <laughs> just put, put that out there. Uh, Patrick, uh, you just stayed at Disney. Do you ever stay at Universal? Would you stay at these? I have. Um, I haven't in a long time because they don't really have anything for a four year old. Um, yeah, I would stay at these, but I like the way Universal is doing things because they've made it very clear that you are in a class system when you come to their parks. <laughs> cool, you want to stay at the uh, the cheaper hotel? Sure, it's going to be really nice, but you don't get all the benefits that the Deluxe does. And I wish Disney would just be as obvious. You know, Deluxe Resort guests are starting to get uh, longer nights if we really want to fix the system tear it to the hotels give it to people in hotel packages just like universal does yep uh anything about this shannon before we move on nope nope okay i love that <laughs> theme for easy. you tonight i love that theme for you tonight it's great um patrick i i wanted to hit you up about this one because i know that yeah. you had an interest in corn dogs uh yeah and also Mad. cake you First like cake part of right my trip. uh I and so you cake rob yes so you went to the boardwalk where the new cake bake shop and the new corn dog shop are, the are open? Are they open, right? No, they are not. They're not. They're not open. I was lying. No. And the giant food <laughs> looks so delicious. Um, the, I'm really sorry. I mentioned it in the chat. There is a bug looming dangerously close above my head. Um, <laughs> the food looks so good. My family was so angry that we couldn't eat it. I was like, yeah, this is supposed to be done December of 2023. It'll get done eventually. Meanwhile, Epic Universe is completely built. They haven't refurbished a corn dog stand. I was <laughs> wanted to go in there and start working on it myself. Like, are the corn dogs in here? Can I just throw them in a fryer later? I just want a corn dog. This was my plan: a corn dog and lemonade every day, staying at that resort. Um, Time get back to yeah. Oh, great! They added wood paneling. There still needs to be windows, and it's not finished at all. It's it, how is this taking this long? Um, tying it back to the other one, the refurbishment at the Boardwalk Resort was done incredibly well. Those rooms are beautiful. They're really well done, and they are still distinctively Disney. They don't look like a Marriott. They don't look like, you know, you're you're in a Lowe's hotel. It looks like a Disney hotel, so I appreciated that. However, work harder and faster on finishing these buildings while Universal is putting up six hotels, two theme parks, and uh, I don't know what else. Uh, they got a Bright Line station, and we don't. And a partridge in a pear tree. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I was talking to my wife about the cake bake shop because we're going to go in June. And I was I was like, I don't know if it's going to be open. Is it going to be open? I don't know. It's going to open in no, 2024, Shannon. Shannon. Absolutely 2024. Not. Are you going to – are you putting money on when? No. Um, I think <laughs> Boardwalk said, let me take a page out of Epcot's book because we're just – not going to have anything open for an obscene amount of time. We're going to tear down a structure to rebuild exactly what it looked like before, i.e. that building and cake bake is exactly the same as it looked for ESPN, right? Um, which is some windows. Um, yeah, I don't know. As, as someone who um, pretty much always stays in a Crescent Lake resort, this is obnoxious, and I'm ready for the boardwalk to be thriving again. Okay. Stephanie, anything before we move on here? I second all that. <laughs> second all that. Perfect. Uh, let's finish up with this. Uh, so we've seen – We <laughs> speaking of things that aren't done yet, uh, we've seen a DVC uh, – what do people call this? Like the HGTV version of the cabins. Uh, we've seen one in the wild now. They uh, There's <laughs> one out there. It, it actually exists. We can see it in the back there. It looks like it's not quite – finished but uh it you know it's back there in the back so there's 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 hope that these things are going to be open soon 
Um, I know most people aren't very excited about these, though, but Stephanie, uh, do you think they're going to have them in time? Because people are going to start staying there in July, right? Uh, have them in time. Disney does everything on time. Oh, there we go. An old, old <laughs> sure classic. Do. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what this is. This is green. It's not go away green. So I don't know why it's this neon. Maybe they're going to paint it. Who knows? But it still looks like a shipping container house to me. Well, and yep. I mean, this is, yeah, this is not the finished outside of this hotel. I mean, this, uh, this hotel, yeah, that's this the cabin. Yeah, that's stuff. Yeah, that's the weatherproof stuff on the outside. Although, why you wouldn't have brought it as one piece, I don't know. Wasn't that the whole point of it, Patrick? So, uh, being a DVC member and being a chatty person, I got to talk to some of the DVC reps about this, and I know they're probably about as knowledgeable as bus drivers. But um, <laughs> the models, the models from this come straight from the Star Cruiser. So I don't know if maybe they're lifting rooms out of the Star Cruiser and bringing them over. Uh, but they said like the bunk beds and everything is modeled, and the spatial features of it is modeled after the Star Cruiser. Um, they don't even have the demo room open to tour. Uh, they're they're hoping to get that open soon, to, so people can tour the layout physically. Um, I'll tell you, they are pushing these hard in the park. You get a lot of cabin merchandise. Um, it's pins they're giving you out, and uh, they're really pushing it. As a DVC member, I'm excited because the price point is low for points. Um, but as somebody who loved these places, I think it stinks. But they don't look generic, and that, that to me is important. They do not look generic. A few comments from the chat. Ugh, that mm. crappy cabin from Ronald. Uh, Lisa says, DVC mobile homes. So a lot of love, a lot of love in the chat uh, for the new uh, cabins. I mean, you know what? I think people from that the don't have the nostalgia for it will look at it and go, this is nice. Uh, I have a nice place to stay in the middle of the woods. Um, but, yeah, I think there was something, the, the word uh, rustic, but also, um, you know, Again, it, it felt genuine, felt real. Uh, so I hope these are good. I mean, it looks nice on the inside, but it doesn't look like it quite fits. It looks definitely like the definition of glamping. And if we've seen or learned anything from the Mickey Mouse cartoons and Donald's big RV, it doesn't ever work out well. So um, so, uh, so that's that's all the topics for tonight. I do want to say a special shout out to our WIGS members. We love our WIGS, the WDWNT Inner Globe Society. Thank you guys so much for being part of the WDWNT family. If you want to learn more about that, that's our Patreon program. You can go to patreon.com forward slash WDWNT. We have still some live stuff going on. Um, while news today is on hiatus, including we have Deep in the Plus. Last week we had Disney's Wish. Uh, Allison and I did that review, and that was a lot of fun to talk about. Uh, this week, Stephanie, Stephanie, and Shannon. Uh, I almost yeah. I almost put your, your names together. Uh, are going to be doing <laughs> Cinderella, the the one they wanted to do the first time. Brandy and Whitney. <laughs> Uh, April 24th, Cat from Outer Space. Then May 1st, we're doing Solo in honor of May the 4th. And then on May 8th, Ike Eisenman, the original Tony from the Witch Mountain series, was on with Patrick and I, and he did uh, the um, Escape from, uh, and this uh, Escape to Witch Mountain, and this is Return from Witch Mountain, uh, uh, and he's going to be back with us. And it, I... I couldn't be more excited about the fact that we get somebody from the original movie to sit and talk with us about the movie and his experiences with working with uh, Christopher Lee and Betty Davis. And so it's going to be, you know, really fun to talk to him. So tune in on May 8th for that one. Tune in every, every Wednesday night for deep in the plus uh, next Sunday, we will not have a park center because I am going to be trying to outrace the bus uh, in a 10, <laughs> in a 10 K <10K laughs> at at disney at disney it. world so if you're out there for the for the 10k come to the back of the line i'll be back there uh <laughs> trying to walk as fast as possible and outrun the balloon ladies um for the first time ever so uh again thank you guys for being on here if you are a wigs member we do have a quick post show after this so thank you for for spending your sunday night with us thank you guys on the panel here for all of your expertise uh and if we don't see you on the post show have a great week and we'll see you next time Nailed it. Never
never gets old. N- nailed it as always. <laughs>